Hey, I'm Rob Witcher, and I'm here to help you pass the CISSP exam. We're going to go through a review of the major incident response topics in Domain 7 to understand how they interrelate and to guide your studies and help you pass the CISSP exam. This is the second of six videos for Domain 7. I've included links to the other mind map videos in the description below. Before we get into the incident response process, let's define two terms. We'll start with an event. What's an event? An event is an observable occurrence. Someone logging in is an event. A file being written to a drive is an event. Someone scanning the external firewall is an event. We do not particularly care about the vast majority of events. Now, what is an incident? An incident is an event that negatively impacts the organization in some way. A server crashing, a password being brute forced, an attacker getting through the firewall. These are all incidents. We definitely care about incidents. Our incident response process is focused on detecting these incidents, providing an effective and efficient response to reduce the impact to the organization, maintaining or restoring business continuity, and defending against future attacks. To effectively respond to an incident, you must first do a fair bit of preparation, create an incident response policy and procedures, identify and train the appropriate people, put in place monitoring capabilities, etc., etc. The incident response process can be categorized into three major categories or buckets, triage, action and investigation, and recovery. We'll start at the beginning of the incident response process, triage. The first and absolutely most important step in incident response is detection. If you cannot detect an incident, there is no way you can activate your incident response process and do all the rest of the stuff we're going to talk about. If you are asked on the exam to put the incident response process steps in order, always look for detection as the first step. There are all sorts of ways that we can identify and detect incidents from the flood of events that are constantly occurring. We can use tools like intrusion detection systems, which feed into our security information and event management systems, or building monitoring systems like fire alarms, or a report from an employee, among many other ways. And remember the difference between an event, which is an observable occurrence, and an incident, which is an event that has a negative impact on the organization. Once we have detected an incident, the next step is to respond by activating our incident response team. And one of the first things the incident response team is going to do is conduct an impact assessment. They're going to try to determine the severity of the incident and how long it will take to recover. The impact assessment drives the rest of the process. And if the maximum tolerable downtime is going to be exceeded, then this will be treated not as an incident, but rather will declare a disaster and enact our BCP and DRP plans. More on that in video six, when I talk about business continuity management. I'll link to that video below. The next category is action and investigation. And the next step is mitigation. Mitigation is where we try to minimize the damage and contain the incident. For example, if we have a worm spreading across our network, we may decide to disconnect systems from the network. Or if we have a fire, activate the fire suppression system. These are ways we can try to minimize the damage and contain the incident. Reporting is actually conducted throughout the incident response process, not just at this point. What is important to remember is that there should be one dedicated contact person on the incident response team who is reporting out to all the relevant stakeholders, management, investigators, regulators, customers, the media, etc. While the rest of the team stays focused on responding to the incident. The recovery category is where we work on getting things back to business as usual and making improvements so that the same incident doesn't occur again. The recovery step is where we work on returning things to business as usual. In the worm outbreak, for example, we eradicate the worm and begin reconnecting systems to the network. Or in the fire example, we clean up the charred smoking mess of the office, install new carpeting, paint the walls, move out the furniture. These are examples of recovering to get back to business as usual. Remediation actually begins in parallel with mitigation. Remediation is where we are performing root cause analysis 
to determine how we can prevent, say, the continued spread of the worm while we recover systems or prevent the reignition of the fire. Remediation continues throughout the recovery and the closure of the incident and leads into lessons learned. Lessons learned is the post-incident step where we do some soul searching. How did this happen? How can we prevent it from happening again? Why us? Just, just why? The goal of lessons learned is to improve processes and systems and teach people to try and prevent future incidents. And if future incidents do occur, detect them more quickly and respond more effectively. And that is an overview of incident response within Domain 7, covering the most critical concepts to know for the exam. If you found this video helpful, you can hit the thumbs up button. And if you want to be notified when we release additional videos in this mind map series, then please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications. I'll provide links to the other mind map videos in the description below. Thanks very much for watching and all the best in your studies.